So take a look here. This is the new Distress Christmas collection. Now this is a seasonal release. This is pretty much, I'm gonna just call it like part two because we had a Halloween seasonal release with Ranger and the Distress line. And now we have a Christmas holiday release. And I'll take you through the products. You're gonna see uh, the mica stains here. And then just like we did for Halloween, we're going to have a sparkle set and we're gonna have a texture set. But of course these sets are different than what we did for Halloween. So let's go in and just talk about this first. First off, again, this is a seasonal release, which means Ranger has already manufactured this release. And when it's sold out, it is sold out for the season. This is not product that will be added to the line next year. This is not uh, going to be a line extension. We're not bringing it back in January. It is what it is. When it's gone, it's gone for the season. Now, that doesn't mean it won't uh, come back next season, hopefully. Hopefully, Ranger was... Um, pleased with the release of this Halloween and hopefully for the Christmas collection. And they'll agree that this is a fun thing to do every year for the season, but it will not be part of the line. And I want to make that clear because there's people uh, like from the Halloween side of things, because we launched the Halloween uh, and I know that Ranger sold out of it very early, but I know many retailers still have it. So if you're looking for the Halloween stuff, it's still available. Uh, check your retailers. But I, I know that people go, oh, that's okay. You know, it sold really well. It's going to add it. That's not the case. It is seasonal, so when it's gone, it's gone for good. Now for the Christmas release, we have six new colors of Distress Mica Stain, okay? So this is set one for the Christmas. This contains Peppermint Stick, which is a beautiful red, and I'll go in and show you swatches and all of that. Frosted Juniper and Tree Lot. Then in this set, we have Winterberry, Snow Flurries, and Holly Branch. So still like a you know, like a pink and a green and a blue, but two completely different palettes. Could you yes, just address Mario. that it is worldwide? Of course, okay. you just did, but I'll say it again. People can't hear me. Yes, okay. It is available worldwide. It has been available worldwide. It is always available worldwide. So every product that we release with any brand, any company is available worldwide. And one thing I would always say is to check with your local online retailer. If they don't have it, it's simply because they chose not to order it all right so it is available and ships local worldwide stores. local online worldwide there you go all right so for the mica stains we've got of course the traditional palette and this bright palette and i'll show you really where these fit in because i think that's super super important to note and then for the sparkle set and again i'll show you swatches this you guys this is some serious sparkle going on usually around here glitter is an outdoor activity uh, and I'll explain why, but we're going to do this indoors because it's the demo. But uh, we have two different glitters. Now, this is a metallic glitter. So it is an ultra fine glitter. There is tinsel and garland. And I'll show you specifically the colors. You can't really see them in the jar. It doesn't really uh, kind of show you how amazing it is. And then speaking of amazing, well, a texture set. And just like the Halloween texture set, the Christmas texture set does not disappoint because it does unique things. Uh, than what we have in the regular Distress Texture line. Again, these are not going to be line extensions. This is just seasonal. And I know much to the sadness of the makers already that uh, have been working with this stuff. And they're like, I hope you're bringing this in. I'm like, yeah, no. Okay, the first one is going to be Crackle Paste. This is Icicle. I'll show you exactly what this stuff does. And then we have a Grit Paste called Snowfall. All right, so those are, those are them. That's the release. These four SKUs, but now we're going to get into... I think what makes everything uh, magical and amazing, right? So first off, let's talk about the mica stains and the actual color swatches. And again, I'll get into the demo. If you haven't seen this, if you don't know what makes what different, uh, I'll definitely get into this. But yes, as Mario said, available worldwide, available at your stores. You need to check with your stores. You need to check if you have a local store, check with them. If you don't, check with your online store. And honestly, guys, if, if they don't have it, it's just because they chose not to order it, which is completely fine. But Ranger ships to everyone worldwide. And they do a great job, right? We work on kind of uh, trying to get things released uh, initially. Uh, so some stores, I mean, Ranger starts shipping the product early in the week. And so it does arrive at different times in different parts of uh, the US and of course the world because Ranger has to just start shipping orders at some point. So people get it at different times, but just trust that it will be uh, available and out there. So let's go into this first kit and I'll say it's set one. It really doesn't matter what set, but I mean, they call it set one. It's the one with the, this dark red. So let's get into the colors. So this is peppermint stick. And as you can see, peppermint stick is this really wonderful traditional red. It has some bright hues. It also has some really 
uh, dark undertones, which I love when it comes to a red. And then you can see it's got that shimmery red pearl. Now, the thing to know with mica stains, and I even did swatches again in uh, the different substrates. So let me just open these up because I like to have swatches. Swatches are good. Mario helps me with the swatches, so it's a good thing. We have a lot of swatches to make, don't we, Mario? Yeah, we All the time. Like All the time. Okay, so here's what we've got. This set of swatches where you see that bright, true color, this is on Distress Watercolor cardstock. Right? I use the smooth side just because I think when it comes to showing off the pearl, especially in a video, uh, the smooth side, it really shows the pearl a little bit better, but you can use it on either side. But this set is watercolor cardstock. This is craft heavy stock. So this is a thick craft, just so you can see the intensity of the color of the stain, as well as that wonderful mica pearl. Now the micas, of course, are all synthetic. So Ranger uses synthetic mica, not only in the mica stains, but also in the mica flakes. I know people ask about that. It is synthetic. And then we have on black. Now I like to work with black alcohol ink cardstock just because, well, it's thick, right? So you can, you can hear it's a very thick weight. Uh, and what is important to me about that is again, I want that, that shimmer to sit on the surface. Now, of course, when you get onto darker cardstocks, you're going to see mostly just the mica because these dyes are translucent, which means we can see through them. So if you put a translucent red over black, you don't really see the red ink, but you certainly pick up that pearl or that mica. So they do work on all three uh, different substrates. So this first one, of course, peppermint stick, you can see just a beautiful red for your festive makes. Then this one, ooh, this would be my favorite. I'm just gonna tell you right now. This is Frosted Juniper. And Frosted Juniper is kind of like if Ice Spruce, Evergreen Bough, and Weathered Wood got together because that's exactly what we put together to create this, this color. You can see the pearl is a very interesting color. I'm not gonna say it's a blue pearl or a gray pearl. It is, it's a, it's a gray blue pearl. And you can see, of course, how it shows up on the different substrates. There it is on Craft. And now you can really check out the pearl. See that color pearl? Isn't that beautiful on the black? Mm. So that is Frosted Juniper. Again, same set. Then we're gonna get into Tree Lot. Tree Lot's pretty intense. Tree Lot is kind of like rustic wilderness meets peeled paint, I would say. Um, it has a really, really deep green. You can see that. But you can see as it wicks out, and this really hasn't been blended with water. This is just sprayed and a few water drops flicked on there just to create the modeling. But this part right here has not been wicked out but that's where you're going to see these tones. And that's the important thing to know about the mica stains. They are not a specific distress color. They have been blended from the distress palette. And so all the cool things that certain colors in the palette do, that's what I wanted to incorporate. So they create beautiful wicking. So shout out to Steve at Ranger. He's the chemist that, that helps formulate these colors and gets them absolutely perfect. And then you can see on craft. So of course, when we go to craft, it gets a little darker, right? Because we're now picking up the brown, brown and green happiness. And then you can see on black, and again, you'll see where that green pearl just really takes over. Beautiful. One thing I love about the mica stains, if you haven't played with them much, and you'll see in the demo, is just how the, the mica actually attaches itself to the colorant. So anything that it does, the mica and pearl moves, of course, with the color. So that would be set one. Now we're gonna get into set two. Set two, these may not be your traditional colors, but they work great for a lot of people that do whimsy holiday, right? something with just a little bit more fun. So this first one is Winterberry, and this is kind of like worn lipstick, kitsch flamingo with a little bit of tattered rose in there. You can see the pearl, it's almost like a pink champagne color, but I love how this pink is because we get uh, those deep hues of pink, but we also get that nice light wash of pink. And the surprising thing, of course, even though it is pink, look how it shows up on craft, right? Really beautiful, definitely very vintage, but I love the fact of being able to see the pink on craft because what you need to remember also about these mica stains, these are a saturated, very intense concentrated dye. Again, when you've used it, you know that the colorant is really intense in these, uh, more intense than in the regular distress stain, okay? And that's what is providing a, a real good punch of color with just a, a simple spray. And then of course we can see on black. Now black, we're really only picking up kind of that pink champagne color of the pearl, but beautiful. Love that mica pearl in there, very pretty. Then we've got snow flurries. Mm, now snow flurries, well, that's just a beautiful color. 
It is. It's yes, it could have a wintry vibe, but it can also have a beachy vibe and everything in between. But take a look at snow flurries. We have some really deep part of like salty ocean, but we also have a little mix in there of some tumbled glass. And believe it or not, there's even a little bit of speckled egg in there, a little kind of that that grayish blue in there, but not too dirty because I wanted this color to be uh, very clean because again, you can mix the mica stains with your other distress products, whether it's ink pads, oxides, or spray stains. So take a look at snow flurries on craft. Mm, so pretty. And then on black. Ooh, look at that. See, look at that blue pearl because each of these mica stains have a unique color of pearl that coordinates with the color of dye. So it's not just white pearl added. It's actually a color pearl. And so they show up different on different substrates. Swatches are life, guys. That's it. And then we have Holly Branch. Now, it's really interesting. I don't even think this is the, let me just, <laughs> I'm gonna, let me just look at something really quick because that doesn't look, see, I know my stuff, guys. This is Bubbling Cauldron. This is Holly Branch. I can, I had it over my Halloween swatches. I'll show you in a second. I can just tell right away because this color, this is magic. And here's the thing about Holly Branch. That is what I like. As soon as I picked that other one up, I'm like, wait, it's not doing its thing. Holly Branch is this electric vibe. It's like twisted citron meets crushed olive and a splash of forest moss. So you can see that it gets that really dark, dirty olive, dirty martini kind of look. Um, that's a dilutions color. And then getting into that really bright, light green color as it wicks out, a lot of yellow. But take a look at that pearl, right? Oh, so good. Such a cool chartreuse vibe. So Holly Branch, as you can see, it really does change when it gets onto different substrates. Even like on black, it's almost like a, a yellow color, but it's still a very, it's a very olivey pearl. That's the only way to describe it. It definitely has more yellow in it than Bubbling Cauldron. That's how I knew like right away. See the difference? See, that's how as soon as I touch it, I'm like, wait a minute. That is not the magic of Holly Branch because I love how these colors work together. So cool, right? Absolutely unbelievable seeing these uh, these mica stains. Now, before I get into uh, the textures, let's just talk about the mica stains, right? Because I mentioned these are seasonal. So of course we have our Christmas set. And then last month at the very beginning of the month, we launched the Halloween set. And these four sets, these are absolutely incredible. And I told you guys uh, that when they're gone, they're gone for good. I know a lot of you have sent messages and emails and like, no, but I need these. Yeah, I get it. But here's the thing. You can get them now. Now is the time to get them. But when they're gone, they're going to be gone for good. And here's really the magic. Because these were launched when, of course, I created the palette. I wanted to create a palette of colors that not only would I use during the season, right? The fall season, Halloween season, winter and Christmas season. But I wanted something that I knew that if I created this product that was only going to be for a seasonal time, that I would still get the benefits of this product year round. So this palette, these colors right here, actually creates this palette. Now, the interesting thing about it is that throughout the entire release is people said, oh, I don't do fall. I don't do Halloween. Well, combined, there is a full palette of 12 colors by design. So when I created this full palette, I decided, okay, which colors are going to work for fall and Halloween and which are going to work for winter Christmas. And as you can see from both releases, well, they work for the season, but they also provide you a full palette of mica stain to use year round, a full rainbow of colors. That is beautiful. It is beautiful. Thank Look you. I agree. It's a, it is a beautiful display. The cool thing about these colors, and yeah, that's Mario's great idea to just stick them onto a ruler. Because I'm like, how do I pick up all the bottles without them rolling? He's like, just stick them on a ruler. Genius, yeah? So that is the full palette. That, of course, includes all four of these, the Halloween and the Christmas, and you will have a full palette. So again, as a maker, right, when you're working through these colors, I'm just going to pull out the original swatches again. When you're working through your colors, I want to just show you the importance of kind of that rainbow swatch. So you might be using them for your seasonal makes. That's excellent. But you might want to get yourself another set for every day. Now, I'm not telling you I'm not the pushy bye bye bye. That's not who I am. Um, it's just so you know. Yeah. So here we go. <laughs> Mario's even going to do a little song. So we've got, again, full rainbow, right? Pink, red, orange. So we've got winterberry. That's going to be Christmas. 
peppermint stick, Christmas. Then we throw in jack-o'-lantern. Then we've got flickering candle. Yum. It's so good. I love that color. Then we've got holly branch, which again, you can see is much more of that chartreuse lime green. Then we have bubbling cauldron. That's going to be more of your traditional kind of grass green. Then we're going to get into a dark green of tree lot. Then we're going to get into that bright blue of snow flurries. Then we have frosted juniper and frosted juniper again is that it's enough blue to kind of muddy this, but it's also uh, enough green that you can also create some beautiful teal with it. Then we have a little hocus pocus. It's going to give us that purple. Crooked broomstick is going to be our brown. And then we have empty tomb, which is going to be our black. So right there, you guys, that is, of course, the full palette of Distress Mica Stain. Very cool. Again, seasonal release. But now that you see it, and I tried to tried to explain when we launched the Halloween, I'm like, trust me, guys, even if you're not into Halloween, you're going to appreciate the fact that if you like to work with all the different uh, colors of the rainbow, that you will be able to, to utilize the Mica Stains for that. So there you go. That is the full 12 colors of the palette. And yes, when they're gone, they're gone. So if people say, well, what if I use this up next year? Sorry, <laughs> sorry, what can we do, right? But let's get into, that's right, I've stocked up. I know I have, I've stocked up just before because, well, I wanted to, okay. I gotta remind you how many bottles of coconut syrup I bought from Starbucks. That's right, we, before it went away. That's, we all have our things, you're totally right. I remember that, like we went I to every Starbucks. Yeah, you even like emailed people like, yeah. Yeah, Maybe like Chow, right? Amy like, Tan's mom, yes. when she'd go to Hawaii, it's like, pick up the Starbucks coconut syrup. I was the same way with, with Seas Candy when I would text Paul and Jay because they have a Seas there. I'm like, yeah. I, I need more hot hearts. Do you have it? You if you like what you like, you can get it. If you don't get it, it just means you didn't like it as much as you say you did. And that's fine. Okay, let's get into the sparkles. Are you ready, guys? So this is the sparkle set that is in uh, the Distress Christmas collection. These glitters are amazing. They are stunning. So let me just, I just want to make sure, Mario, you're in a perfect spot right there. He's standing in front of the fan so these don't blow around. All right. There are two colors, okay? Tinsel and garland. Tinsel is going to be a tarnished silver, like tinsel, like icicles. Garland is going to be more of a tarnished brass or tarnished gold. Now, these glitters are, uh, they're not a stock color, but at the same time, they're not a blend. And I say that because if you are familiar with the Distress Glitter Dust in Vintage Platinum. That was a blend of colors. I've always talked about that. And if you have it, you know that sometimes you see yellow or you see gold or you see silver. These are an actual uh, color matched color. So we swatched the color. We had uh, the factory match the color. So this is not a blend to create this color. So this is going to be that same color true and true. And that makes a big difference, especially if you're using it uh, in small amounts on cards uh, or any of your makes because you're going to get that authentic true color. Let me just carefully open this first one. I'm just gonna peel this off just to show you. So this is tinsel, okay? It is an ultra fine glitter. It is a metallic glitter, which means it's going to become airborne if you spray it in the air, but that's okay. Some people like glitter. I use glitter as an outdoor kind of activity for it. Um, I'm just gonna throw this away. I don't need that little seal that just comes in the jar when you first open it, okay? Let me close this up. And let's get into Garland. You can see I've used this color because this color is like, oh my gosh, it's so good. So this is, you can see, it's not a yellow gold. It's not a golden rod. It's not any of that. It is this beautiful tarnished, well, antique gold. Both colors are not going to be your traditional gold or silver. They're going to have uh, these tarnished undertones. The tinsel, now I'm going to take the swatch. See, I even keep the swatches in a bag just because, just from a glitter perspective. Take a look at tinsel. I mean, can you even see it's like it's like the platinum of my dreams. So you can see there are no there are no fluming of a yellow or any other color because this is that color through and through. So tinsel is that perfect antique silver platinum, beautiful, almost champagne color. I absolutely love it. So it's not just going to be that silver, but it's definitely on the silver side. You can see that, especially compared to garland. Right. You just think about the time when Monica was here with all that glitter. I remember that. A friend Monica was here with <laughs> glitter and we were trying to glitter stuff and she let the bottle just roll, oh, go in the air, roll all around the studio. Yeah. And then I'm like, just get in the shower with your clothes on. She had so much glitter. <laughs> oh my gosh. 
So this is garland. You can see it's that beautiful, beautiful antique gold. I say antique gold because it is. It's like antique gold over brass, I think. But some people would probably say this is more on the brass side because it doesn't have a lot of yellow. But when we have both colors side by side, there you go. You can see the difference in there. Now, I'll talk about different ways that we can apply them when I get into the demo because there are some, some really cool ways that we can apply these glitters. But if you are a fan of vintage color glitter, that's the whole purpose of this sparkle set because it is this beautiful vintage metallic colored glitter. All right. So let me the take these out. I'm great. Thank you. All right. Let me just clean this real quick. Yes. Best thing for glitter ever right? Take a little Swiffer and you can take that right off of your, your hands, your table, your clothes, <clears throat> whatever you got. We're going to shower. All right. Good deal. <laughs> so next up we're going to talk about is the texture set. One of my favorites. I like the fact that we were able to play around with a lot of textures. Now for Halloween, of course, we did uh, <clears throat> the grit paste and the tomb. So one was kind of a stone gritty one. One was a little bit smoother that had the look of concrete. This time I wanted to take it in a totally different direction when it comes to winter, okay? So we've got a crackle paste in icicle, but you'll notice it looks a little weird in that jar. I'll show you. And then we have grit paste in snowfall, okay? So the cool thing about these, I'll bring both of these mediums in. Wait until you see what they do. It's pretty unbelievable. So the first one we'll talk about, well, let's just get into the grit paste snowfall. So what this one is, this is actually a translucent texture paste that is gritty, right? So when you, when you have it there and you kind of move it around, you can see the little particles in there. It is gritty. But when this dries, although it will go on white, when it dries, it will dry translucent, translucent over transparent, right? Translucent means we can kind of see through it. Transparent means you can totally see through it. It is translucent because this also contains clear glitter, it contains rock candy glitter. And the cool thing about this, let me bring this swatch up and hopefully the light will do it justice. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. But it actually has, you can see that little sparkle in there. And that little sparkle throughout that is because this is a translucent paste with clear rock candy distressed glitter. Now you may think to yourself, <clears throat> hold on, wait a minute. I have translucent grit paste and I have Distressed rock candy glitter. Could I make my own? Yes, you can. <laughs> That's what we did, right? But this was just something that was already pre-mixed. And if you didn't have both and you wanted just a little bit of cool snow effect, you can. So this is translucent grit paste mixed with clear rock candy distressed glitter already pre-mixed. And the cool thing, of course, when you spread it onto your makes, you're not only going to get that little sparkle, but not overly sparkly, but you're going to get a beautiful wintry effect. And these can go on to the grit paste sticks to wood, it will stick to bobbles or bubbles. So if you wanted to make snowballs for Christmas or you wanted to go on the top of uh, little paper houses for Sizzix, a lot of different things that we can do. And I love that it dries with this gritty texture. There you go, you can see how the light hits it. It just has more of a, of a sparkle like snow. That's really why I wanted to do this because I love all the different textures and grits, especially at the holiday season. But I wanted something that looked a little bit more snowy. All right, so that is the grit right there. Then we're going to get into the good one. <clears throat> this is a good one too, but this one, this one is one that you, well, you just can't make at home. So this guy right here, this is called icicle. So let me, I'm going to wait for this to settle a second because it was sitting on its side before I opened it up. Okay, here we go. So icicle is a crackle paste, but you need to understand the crackle paste part of this. Okay, let me just peel this off. It's a new jar because I already used my other one it, for, the, for the sample. So I'm just going to peel this up and throw it away. When you get this, you can scrape off the excess and then this goes into the garbage. Okay. So here's what this is. Hopefully the camera is going to do it justice. All right. So if you look in here, the cool thing about this jar, let me grab a palette knife too, is this particular paste. Can you see it? There we go. The light's catching it just right. You see that wonderful little, almost like moon dust look throughout it. This is a pearlized translucent crackle paste. So we say paste, meaning it is thicker than paint. You can see how it kind of strings off almost like a thick syrup, right? 
So it is definitely a paste, but it's not going to go on like frosting like the regular opaque crackle paste because this doesn't have any fillers. But as the light hits it, there you go, you can see it. When you open the jar yourself, pearl is always a weird thing to show on camera, but you can see it has a wonderful pearlized luster throughout the entire thing. And it creates this wonderful, there you can, you can see how that pearl broke right in there. See the pearl line? Oh, so good. So you don't have to stir it or mix it. It's, it's suspended throughout the entire jar. There you go. You can see the striations the more you start mixing it. All right. So the cool thing about this particular paste, it is a translucent paste. Let me just clean this off real quick because I'll get into a demo of that too. But it crackles different than really anything that I've had in the line. Different than rock candy crackle paint, different than the opaque distress uh, crackle texture paste. This crackle paste icicle if you put it on thin, now I always apply it with a palette knife. That is my favorite way to apply this, right? Just use a palette knife because if you put it on thin, you're going to get this kind of crack. It is designed to crackle more like ice and not like weathered wood. Okay, keep that in mind. That's why it's called icicle, okay? Because it's designed to crackle like ice, like wintry. So when you spread it on thin with a palette knife, you're going to get these wonderful ice cracks over... A substrate and again palette knife put some on your palette knife spread it around over paper now i found that the crackle will crack better on something porous usually you need something porous for the crackle to do its thing so if you don't like if you try to just put it on a, a piece of plastic or an untreated something it's unpredictable so you always want to put it on something that is porous that has some tooth to it that could be cardstock like this it could be a vignette it could be something that you've gessoed or something that you've applied collage medium to and i'll talk about that in a bit so this is when you apply this thin. Take a look at that cool icy crackle. Now when you apply this stuff thick, well, the same way you would see ice, you get these really ginormous ice cracks. And you can see the pearlescent. Even though this is on white, you can still see the see-through and that little bit of shimmery pearl in there. Do you guys see that? So this is applied same way. Palette knife, just put on like you would butter or peanut butter right you want to put this on fairly thick because the thicker the medium the bigger the cracks and of course as it thins out it does like what ice does you can just see the movement is so wild it's so freaking cool but of course to really point out the pearlescence this i just did this over black not that i would normally use it over black but i thought for camera you can really see all of that little pearlescent mica in there and how it just it's not glitter, so it's not going to be opaque. It just has that wonderful sparkle and twinkle that anything you put it over, it just makes this look, well, icier. It makes it look icier because it has that little bit of pearl in there, and that is just cool. Now, the movement, of course, of your crackle. So can you see how this has more of a linear movement? You guys see the motion? You can even see from the dismount, right? So however you apply crackle, that's going to help impact the movement of the cracks when it does what it does. If you apply it in different directions, you guys can see now, see if you're just seeing this demo, you see the dismount on the paper. By going in different directions, that's gonna tell your crackle to go in different directions. So that's always important when you're working on crackle that if you just stay in one direction, more than likely you're gonna get most of your crackle in that linear pattern. You're always gonna get some, some cross beams Right? But if you want stuff a little bit more random, it's really how you apply it, which is great. The other thing to know about Crackle, my opinion, my opinion only, let it do its thing. Don't speed it up. Don't force dry it. Don't use a heat tool. Don't use a fan. Don't use any of that. Just put it somewhere and forget it. The longer it has to dry on its own and Crackle, the more it's going to do its magic. Because Crackle paint, because it has a shrinkage factor, that's what makes it crack. If you force dry it, a lot of times you'll get a, a skin that bonds on the surface and it prevents it from cracking fully. So just let it do its thing, right? Maybe it's going to take an hour or so, depends on humidity, but it's definitely worth the wait. Now, the other cool thing I love about this particular uh, look and feel is that it also cracks over things. It cracks over an ink substrate. So the cool thing about an inked substrate like something that's done with distress ink or distress oxide is that this does not impact the color. Some crackle mediums do that. When you put crackle over the top, it will like change your ink color. It changes blue to pink or uh, pinks to lime. 
And you can see here that this didn't do that at all. Again, it's just watercolor cardstock. I went in, did a little mix of colors with some spray stain, right? This looks a little bit like a little salvage patina right in here. There's a little bit of speckled egg, a little bit of ice spruce right there. Yep, just splattered that on. But take a look at how that crackled. Now, what I did on this one, and hopefully you can see by now, thick in the middle, you can kind of see the lines, spread it out super thin as I got to the edge. So I didn't do like that, that kind of peanut butter coat over the whole thing, thick and then thin, because I wanted the cracks to kind of do their thing. Now this, of course, when it's done, it's going to curl up like a chip because crackle shrinks. That's what it does. That's what makes the paint or medium do whatever. It's going to shrink. But even though it shrinks, it stays pliable and flexible. So can you die cut it? Yes. Can you stamp on it? Well, yes, but it's uneven. I would have stamped first, like in archival, and then cracked through it. But it remains pliable. So die cutting, any of those things are totally fine through this. Can you 3D emboss this? Yes. You can do anything you want to it, but a tip to get this to flatten is after it does its thing and you come back to it in an hour the next day and you see your paper like this, don't freak your freak, guys, right? I don't like to put a laminator onto this because I think it just gets a little sticky. So all I do is I turn it over, I miss the back of it with water, and I put it under something heavy, a book, a bunch of Sizzix dyes, whatever, let it dry for maybe 15 minutes, and then you have a usable piece of cardstock, something that you can do a lot of different things with. Another cool thing though that we can do with this, so let's take this one right here, right? Here's another little sample. So if you look right here, you can see that beautiful crackle over the purple. Now let's say you put it on there and you're like, ah, I don't really see it. I want to see my crack. Who doesn't want to see their crack? Look at that. Whoa. Okay. Well here, totally different from not really seeing much of it on my background to almost like spider webs. So this could be spider webs for Halloween probably, but also this cool wintry. Here's a trick if you want to highlight crackle on an inked substrate, okay? Meaning we're gonna have contrast. Now, I don't like to go in with anything wet because if you go in with something wet, you risk that color seeping underneath the cracks and ruining your background, right? So if you put like a, a wash of something over there, that's what you're going to risk doing. You need something dry. If you go over it with acrylic paint, well, acrylic paint wants to dry pretty quick and that could risk, of course, going in and covering all that translucent crackle with paint and then you don't see your ink color. So what is the solution? Distress crayon in picket fence, right? So this is a white crayon. If you know anything about uh, distress crayons, they are water reactive pigment. So that means I can go in, here's that clear area. I can scribble some of this crayon over the top of it and then just go with my finger and immediately work that in. I say immediately because crayons do dry, but take a look at that. Now they are highlighted and you could go in and add as much as you want. You can scribble more. I kind of go in a little swirly motion just to work that in, but look at that. See how more defined they are? Very cool. And that's it, that's the simple thing. Now, of course, Distress Crayons, they used to, uh, they came out in a set, then they were sold individually. Now Ranger only makes them at, at a, as a set. So if you can still find a retailer that sells these open stock, this might be one of those colors that you stuck up on because uh, once the open stock is sold out, and it may very well be sold out by now, crayons will only start coming in uh, as sets moving forward. That's the only way Ranger is going to keep them in. But I wanted to share that little, that little trick that if you really want to highlight the crackle in anything that you do, uh, especially for winter, you can do distress crayon. Now that means obviously if you had other crackle paste, regular distress crackle paste, and you wanted black or blue or any color under the set, you could put any color in there. I'm just saying, what do you do if you have a translucent and you want to still see the cracks, but you want to also appreciate your background? That is my crayon of choice. Quite beautiful, isn't it? And again, still flexible, still pliable, even though it's that thick, because it is designed to be that. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right, okay. I think people are coming more for the entertainment than the demo. What is the entertainment? Are you in the crack? Oh, well, you know, you gotta just, you guys, sometimes you gotta get your crack on. All right, so let's let's just get into it let's get into some inky stuff um i will i'll work with of course the seasonal colors the christmas ones but then i you know i might throw in a halloween one here or there you never really know okay let's see what we've got all right got my media mat here okay 
Hey, Mario, would you do me a favor? Sure. Um, out in the garage, can you grab me a new, a new one? Oh, sure. Yeah, I sliced mine. Oh, yeah, See, sure. the only thing that you can't do on that craft mat is cut on it. And I was really paying attention. I was doing some die cutting and I just, you know, it is what it is. So it's going to be, yeah, I get to have a new one for this demo. That's exciting. But I pretty much, I'll use this craft mat until honestly, it just, if I cut through it, that's the only time I don't like it because I don't like cleaning it. But if it gets marked up or anything, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal to me. But if you slice it, you probably definitely want to, to change it up. So we're going to get into the sprays. Now, a couple of things uh, when it comes to the mica stains or anything that's going to have uh, that mic at the bottom. If you lay them down on their on their sides when you're working with it, I'll probably push Ooh, it off camera. Oh, that's better right. I better order some more. All right, let's just take this out. There we go. Thanks. Make sure this is clean and smoothy. All right, perfect. Uh, it's, a, it's nothing better. That's a good feeling, right? Having this mat. Beautiful feeling. Okay, a little air bubbles in there. Push those out. Normally I would go in with a scraper. I'm going to be fine. All right. So if you have your uh, mica stains on their side, that's going to slowly move that mica to the side of the bottle. And that's just going to be like less shake time, right? That's it. Pretty simple. Okay. So when we're going to work on our surfaces, again, you can do watercolor cardstock. You can do mixed media heavy stock. You can do whatever it is you want to do. But I've gone in and prepped some things for this one because I love working uh, with texture paste, right? The distress texture paste, we talked about this during Halloween. It's something really cool and fun. Uh, it just has such a great quality to it when you put it on that it's going to be absorbent to our colors. It also stays flexible. So I wanted stuff already prepped and dried. So if you're not familiar with texture paste, you can go back and check out uh, the Halloween demo or really any of the other demos where I talk about texture paste. But these are just done through a stencil and let it dry. So again, I've got watercolor cardstock on some. I have uh, white heavy stock on some, craft heavy stock, mixed media heavy stock, just play around. Different papers are going to do different things. That's just what it is, okay? So for my sprays, just take a little splat box here because I also like to have a splat box handy if I'm spraying around, going with a, a paper towel as well. And let's do, I, want to, I really want to do a poinsettia one first. I don't know why, I just do. So I'm gonna do uh, this one, gonna kind of spray around with some colors. Now you have some options. Usually when it comes to shaking, you want to kind of ring it like a bell, right? That's what's going to allow that mica and that ink to move around. It takes a little bit longer, especially because I just laid these on the side to get that mixing ball to move. If you're impatient like me, you can shake them up, up and down, but anytime you have a spray that you need to shake up and down, this nozzle is not waterproof, right? It's, it's got a tube that's supposed to suck up the the medium in here and spray it out. So if you're shaking up and down, you're kind of forcing uh, not only air in there, but you're forcing that medium to come up and it leaks out of the neck. So I just cover this with a paper towel. Look at that. Then you can just shake all you want. Sometimes you'll get a leaker, sometimes you won't. You get what you get and you don't throw a fit, but at least this way, look at that, I would have had a leaker. You would have had ink on your hands because you're shaking that up, up and down versus side to side. So again, you do you, but if you want a, a quick, Quick tip for that, you're ready to go. Now, if we work on dry paper, my color is gonna be more saturated on contact. If we worked on wet paper, my color is going to wick on contact. I'm going for a little bit of the solid. So I've got some peppermint stick here. I wanna go in with just that hit of red. Ooh, yeah, right? Nice, okay? And I was, I'm just in the habit of just kind of wiping those off. I'll put these caps off to the side. All right, there we go. You want that mixing ball to go. You don't want a leaker, Vicky, but it happens, right? Who wants to sit there and wait and just kind of ring a bell for that? The other thing I'm, I'm always looking for when I shake it up is just look at the bottom. See, if you don't see any sludge, you're ready to spray. If you see sludge and sludge, meaning there's still mica down there. If you spray it, you're going to just suck up that mica and then it's going to clog the sprayer. And then you have to remove the sprayer and soak it and spray it through water. Ranger also sells replacement sprayer. So if that ever happens, of course, you can just purchase replacement sprayers while some are soaking and cleaning and you know, you're good to go. All right. So I've got winterberry and peppermint stick on there right now. And I think I'm going to dry it at this point because if you just keep going and going and going, we will eventually make mud. Not really what I'm hoping for. I'm going to take a little bit of water and just do a couple of little, little drippity doos. We're going to spray. So here's what's happening, right? That paste of course is going to absorb the color. 
The heat tool, I prefer to dry on my media mat. The heat tool is just going to help set this color a little bit. My colors are still going to overlap and they're going to layer. But the important thing to note is that by drying this, it's going to keep the colors from blending. Right? Wet on wet blends, wet on dry layers. So you'll still get a layer of color, but it's not going to mix together and turn brown. And there's a lot of different things that we can do to kind of save this and create some, some different effects. And that's just what I'm going to do. All right. So when I dry, when I'm working on backgrounds, I don't cook it, right? You can see there's still some wet areas there. So I don't sit there and just cook it up. I just want to dry it. it. Doesn't have to be crispy dry, just needs to be somewhat dry. And then I'm going to go in and add some, a little bit of green, right? But before I do, I'm just going to take some paper towel because that's just what I want to do because it's here. And I'm just going to peel this off and just create, let's put this back in this in the box, but I'm just gonna take a little bit of that paper towel and I'm just gonna mask off some of these, okay? It doesn't have to be perfect. Some people wanna do perfect. If you want perfect, then what you can do is you can just go in and, I mean, I would imagine you could stencil and ink that and cut it out and all that, but that is way, way, way too much for me to even deal with, okay. Someone asked what stencil did you use? It's a point set of one. Oh, I have them all here. See, I actually thought because I'm sure Mario could answer that. So there you go. This one, the point set of one is number, I have my paint in there, number 49 is the point set of. Yep. You're welcome. They're right there, Mario. So if you need them, okay. they're there. See, at least I kept them out this time, knowing what I would know, what I know. Okay. So next, we're going to take a little holly branch. I'm going for it. Mm, there we go. Almost. See, there's still just a little bit of. A little bit of sludge. Mm, this is such a good, good color. Okay. And this time I'm just, I'm just doing a little bit more of a splash, but then I'll kind of fill in that space with some green. Okay. Pick this up. There you go. Let those fall. Excellent. Now I want to, I want to move this around because I don't want it to look, you know, like I actually masked it off. So a little water is going to take care of that and a little movement, right? So anytime you want stuff to move, you need to actually be the one doing the movement. So don't just sit there and stare at your paper thinking it's gonna do its thing. And I know I've been guilty of that myself, right? Where I just spray it and I look, I'm like, it's not moving. Well, pick it up, silly, move it around. Look, there you go, fill in the blank. But our flowers are still kind of, well, they're red, okay? It is funny to think about that. And I just kind of say what's in my head, obviously. For better or for worse but you know as a, as a maker it's just one of those things that we do and we don't even realize half the time where we just start spraying with water and we're like oh the ink's not moving and then you just hose it down which i don't really get you know you hose that down and you don't need to do that what you need to do is pick it up and move it and kind of get it where you want or use use water or do any of that so i do love the little bit of holly branch and you're going to see that it's just the reason i use this is because it's a little bit more well it's warmer but you could use bubbling cauldron. You could also, if you wanted it darker, you could go in and use some tree lot. You do you. That's the important thing. All right. Just kind of moving this around. Again, I'm just drawing it with a heat tool. Really important. This little line of sludge. If it looks like sludge, it dries like sludge. So if you don't want it there, just dab it off. Okay. So once we have it dry, and again, it's not crispy dry, but it's pretty dry. You can see that beautiful mica and i love how these mica stains just kind of pool around that stencil we showed that for halloween too you see how it just outlines everything it's pretty magical pretty crazy but now at this point now that we have color down there any water we add to a dry uh, inked background now we're going to get those little splatters and and splotches so i'm taking my sprayer this time i'm just slowly squeezing the trigger just to get you can see i'll show you on the side of the camera see those little raindrops that's what we want we want it just to spit on there so we get some Little dribbles. See, look at that. There's our little dribbly bits. Done. Going to dry that. Now, if we just wanted them to be watermark, we would just dry it completely. But if we want them to actually lift or pull color, we would go in with something porous while they're wet. And we're going to dab over that, which is what I'm doing right now. And that's what's going to pull the color from the background to create just that, that, water, that watermark effect. I love that. Okay. 
Now I'm just going to go in, dry this even more. This time I want it to be dry, dry, crispy, dry, I suppose. Ooh, there's a good one. See that little water spot right there? See it? There you go. I'm about to reveal it. Ah, oh, see? Nice. Okay. Just going to dry this. I want to do some highlighting. Perfect. Such a festive background, right? Super easy. Two colors. That's it. Now you kind of know how simple it is to just go around and we can still do a lot of other inking. So let me just wipe this off for a second. And then here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to take a paper towel and take a little bit of water. Okay. Spray that on the mat. I'm going to take a brush. Now you could use a water brush. You use whatever you want to use. And I'm just going to put some water right in the middle of that flower. I'm going to touch it, hold that paper towel there and lift it off. Okay. And that's going to pull color from the center of that. You guys see that? And you can do this as many times as you need, right? Because these are going to be water reactive. So you can add the water and you can lift the color. And I'll show you because one, it's going to do a few things. One, it's going to give me a fade. It's going to make, make it look like I know what I'm doing, which I clearly don't I'm just doing this on the fly, but two, it's going to allow me to also introduce another color. Now, the only thing you need to remember is that when you're kind of absorbing or lifting that other color that you switch to a clean part of a paper towel, right? Don't just use the same part. Cause essentially you're just putting that color back. So you just move it around and you want something that's going to be absorbent for this one, meaning you don't just want to like if you if you normally use a cotton towel, which I do, I normally like to work with my little inky binky. Um, if you do that, the thing you need to remember is that it's not as porous as a paper towel. OK, so here's what we have now. All right. You guys see that? See how you have just that little kind of wonderful fade that's happening in there. Beautiful. OK, again, just a paintbrush because I just wanted a wet brush with water. And then I'm going to add some colors. Let's see what I have here. All right, let's take an ink pad, I'll take a little fossilized amber. Could you do this with paint? Yes. Could you do it with glitter? Yes. You do whatever you want. You could use uh, glitter glue. You can use whatever. I'm going to just try it with oxide. I don't know if it's going to work. We'll see in a second. Then you'll know if this is what you should do, or if you should do something other than what I'm showing you. So I'm going to take a blending brush I'm going in with oxide. This is fossilized amber. I'm choosing oxide because oxide has a little bit of pigment to it, right? It's a combo of dye and pigment. So I want that color to be more opaque. Then I'm going to take this blender brush and I'm going to swipe this forward. So you take this and slide it. That's going to compact the bristles and that's going to allow me to focus the color. Oh, before I do that, I just want to make sure this is dry because I don't want this to muddy up with my red. So let's just make sure that's dry. But that's what I like about this. This is going to give me a very dusty, easy blend background. Sliding this forward really kind of like old school stencil brush. Remember like a little stippling brush? That's what this does. So by having this sliding up on the top, it just kind of help, helps keep the bristles from spreading out. So this is just going to allow me to go into that center and just add that little touch of fossilized amber to the center of those flowers. It just gives it, in my opinion, such a beautiful festive look. And because it's an oxide, right? Oxide is going to sit on top. Pigment dominates dye. So it's always going to sit on top. Yes. You're going to pick up a little bit of color. No worries. We're simply going to clean the brush just by using a little water, or you could take a baby wipe and you're simply going to swipe this until you don't see any color coming off of the brush. So I just go to kind of a clean area, just making sure I did load it up because I want it to be intense. All right, that's it clean. So I can slide this forward, notch, notch, quicks closed and put in the tin. Again, I have mine marked just using a Sharpie just so I know, cause I have one for each dedicated color. Take a look at that though. Look at the difference. Just adding that little bit of oxide did in the center of those flowers. Beautiful. And look at that background. So could you go in and add some sparkly goodness and glitter and all that other glitz? Absolutely. You do whatever you want to do, but I wanted to show you just how simple that is to create such a beautiful luminous background with some texture paste, let it dry a little bit of spray, how to control the spray. If you have that doing very, very basic masking, 
using a paper towel, but you could get as you know intense as you want. And then just the tricks of moving that color around, right? Moving your paper, getting a little water to kind of create that movement. But I think the organic look of it is great. And you could always go in, we can continue to change this. That's the thing to, to also remember is that we can change it. Mario, would you mind grabbing me just a blending tool handle, please? Thanks. Every time I think I have everything I need, I truly don't. That's no surprise there, is it? It's like, oh, I have this. Well, except for this. Hey, that's that's Mario loves that. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right, and I'm just gonna show you. So let's just take a, a domed foam because I wanna add a little, little vintage charm on here. I'm just gonna take some Walnut Stain Distress. Now you could go in with a regular blending tool. You could take a blending brush. I'm using a domed foam because it's going to saturate a significant amount of color. It's going to blend with ease and I only wanna go around the edges. That's all I'm doing, but I don't want it to, I don't wanna go like this or like this because I want my edges to still be organic, right? And pretty much one dip with this is going to be enough. It holds a great amount of medium, but it also lets it go. There we are. And then I will still go in and add one more splash of water. And the reason I'm doing that is now you can see I'm focusing the drips around that inked edge. You'll see it just creates a whole nother dynamic to this. You're just kind of seeing that background just come to life right before your eyes. There we are, right? So see that, just that little bit, it just kind of takes your eye away from that darkness, right? Because sometimes you're like, oh, but look, I muddied this up. Oh, but that's okay, takes it away. Let's say you wanted to lift a color, right? Another thing to remember about texture paste is I can go in just with water. So that's just water on a paper towel and I can hold it over an area and I could lighten that at any time. See how I just lifted that color off? So if you wanted to highlight, that's just a damp paper towel. The same way we kind of use the paintbrush to go in the center, we're just highlighting those other areas that we think maybe don't show up as well. There you go. That's it. Simple, cool background. And yeah, we could just keep going and going. We could do splatter, but hello. Hello, Peppermint Stick and Holly Branch. Let's do more. Let's do another one, shall we? We shall. Okay. This one, hmm. Let's do something wintry. Ooh, little snowflake. Now, the thing to know about stencils, and I always like to tell people this, it's pretty important. Um, when it's a stencil, some people get really caught up in the whole stencil size, shape, uh, pattern. Isn't that funny? I put these here and you would think, I'm sure Ranger is like cringing. They're like, really Holtz for branding? You have them all upside down? They just do what they do, all right? Okay, so this, again, texture paste, but this stencil is this one, right? And a lot of times people get really hung up in, in the size of a stencil, right? Maybe it's a square, maybe it's a full page, whatever, or maybe it's this and you think, oh, okay, you know, I can only put this down on my card like this and have a snowflake in the middle. No, remember the whole idea of a layering stencil is for you to decide where you want to position this. So all I did was put this off on the side at an angle. And then when I do my paste kind of work from the corner, so it looks like your design is coming off of the edge and just fading that paste into the center. This way your image can just kind of fade out on the edges. Do you see what I mean? So it's a, a very cool way to, to work with any stencil. All right, so if you're doing stencils, can you do all over? Sure, but can you just do parts and pieces? Let's see, I'm sure I do. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, you can do one in the corner. You don't always have to do the entire thing. You can fill in because maybe you're gonna put a stamp or you're gonna do something else. So don't get, don't get so, so caught up on the orientation of a stencil that it limits your creative thinking, right? You could just do one stencil there if you want. If you want just that one snowflake, you can mask it, but you can also just position that it at any angle to kind of play around. Um, yeah, and if you if you follow uh, Juicy Christians, Natifa, she does a lot of that where she's you know building with stencils, and I think that it's very cool to kind of see that you can take a stencil and create a repeat pattern. And a lot of the makers are doing repeats also, like with shifters. So it's important that you think of the potential of a stencil. Okay, let's work on this background. Now this one, I want this to be more dreamy, right? More more watery, more wispy, not as intense as we did. Uh, the poinsettia. So here are going to be a couple of options. One, I'm going to throw in another color. So here I'm just going to take some spray stain. It doesn't always have to be 100% mica. It can be a whole little mix. I'm also going to take some salvage patina, right? Oxide. Okay. So let's go into that and I'm going to pull in just because I'm going to take a little bit of hocus pocus because I want a little darker purple. Okay. So this, because it's going to be wintry, I'm going to go with my blues. So I'm going to take snow flurry. 
I'm also going to take that cool frosted juniper. And I know I want to do hocus pocus. So now you're going to see kind of the, the true hack style of me, right? I don't have time to shake each one. So if I know what I'm going to do, I'll just take that and just shake it shake, right? Mix them all up at once. Completely fine. All right. Another thing to just point out if you're new to sprays, if you're working with sprays, always get in the habit when you are uh, taking off the clear caps that if you can take the clear cap off by twisting it clockwise, right? If you take them off by twisting it clockwise, you're kind of also securing uh, how tight this is. I don't know if you've ever had a, a spray that just explodes all over your studio because you're sitting there and you try to twist this off counterclockwise and you're essentially undoing the spray nozzle. Just again, something I do without thinking, but it's all, it's often good to just point out that whenever I take this off, I'm always just giving it a quick little clockwise turn, which hopefully helps tighten uh, that sprayer to make sure it doesn't come off. So next we're gonna go in and do our background. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of water. Again, this has texture paste, it's already dry, it's distressed watercolor cardstock. And by adding some water to that surface, these are going to react completely different, okay? You can see just on contact, see how they just start blending and doing their thing? That's the beauty of wet paper versus dry. So there's a little, we're gonna add just a little bit of Hocus Pocus, not much. And then we're gonna throw in some shaded lilac because see, it's like a, it's almost a periwinkle color. I like that quite a bit. And then we're gonna do a little frosted juniper. Frosted juniper is going to, I think, make this a little bit moody, but I like that. And then I'm gonna go back to snow flurries because I want that to just be a little bit more of a dominant color. Excellent. So that's what I have so far on my background. And you can see that all of these colors blended on contact versus this one. Why? Because this started out wet and this was dry after the red layer. Wet on wet blends, wet on dry layers. Always important to remember. So let's go in and dry this. Okay. I just like to work. I don't like to dry in this box. Maybe it's, I don't know why. I just... That's how I do it. Okay. Next, I'm going to dry this. And again, if I want to bring in some of that color, right? If I want to just create a whole different blend of that color, maybe I don't want that harsh edge. I can always pick this up and that's going to start layering that into the background. So you don't always have to blot off that edge. You can use that edge to your advantage just by picking up the paper and starting on the edges, right? Most people, including myself, start cooking right in the middle. Well, if you just pick this up and start cooking from the edges, see, we're, we're fading in and we're using that colorant to our advantage. And now we're going around here. All right, you can see my pork chop finger lifted some of that, so I'm not bothered. Uh, I think it's a little juniper. Let's go in with that. There we go. Took care of that. No worries there. Okay, so, so far we've got a wonderful dry background. And now I want to go in and just start splattering again i'm just just using that see just make that little make that little thing sputter a little bit that's going to also create more of a wintry vibe and then we're going to add a little oxide spray so this one i'm going to shake that up not bad i'm being risky it's not covered but i only have two hands I don't know about you guys. That's all I got. So let's shake that around. Okay. Next, we're going to go back into the splat box. And I'm just going to like hold down the neck of this. Now, you can use a splatter brush if you want to just splatter instead. But by squeezing the, the top part of this neck and pushing down, I'm going to get this to actually kind of spit out a little bit. You'll see. See that? That was it. So just by, by kind of squeezing this, just so it doesn't get that quick burst of color, it's going to give me these little splatters. And I like that. That's, that's the look I'm going for. So if you wanna, you can mist it over there if you want. But this of course is a little oxide. So we know that the oxide, because it's got that dye and pigment fusion, it's gonna sit on the top a little different. If you ha have some big drippage like right there, feel free to take that. And then what I like to do when I use oxide is I'm just going to give the whole thing a mist of water as I'm drying. Now notice this comes out of the way when this goes in. 
right? Don't do both simultaneously. You'll burn up your heat tool if you spray in the back of it. Been there, done that. More than I care to admit. And the reason I'm doing the water, anyone know? Well, I'll tell you, because I know there's a delay in the chat, but that's because this oxidizes with water. So if you just spray it on, you're gonna get that beautiful color, but I really want the oxidation of the salvage patina color. I don't necessarily want the intense uh, teal of it. I want the oxidation version of it. And you could have mixed it with water and splattered and you would have, you would have gotten that. But this just beautiful, beautiful background. Okay, so here's what we have so far, right? You got that wonderful background. Look at that beautiful, beautiful look of the mica stain. But you can see how it's also kind of broken up in there. And that's what we're going to do even a little bit further. We're going to take this wintry background. We're going to make it even more kind of wintry. I'm just going to start spraying some water. Just being pretty, pretty generous. I'm going to get some drippage going on. You see that? See that movement? Just so you can see really the joy of working uh, with sprays. And the fact that just because you have something dry, it doesn't mean that you have to be done. The beauty of distress, mica stain, spray stain, oxide spray, ink pads, they are water reactive. Use that to your advantage, meaning dry it, react it, dry it, react it. Every single time you dry and react, it's going to react it differently. It doesn't mean that you just can only spray it and you're like a one shot wonder where you're just throwing it on there, taking that water and that's it. So now if I wanna add some more of those drips, well, I have the technology, I'm going back in with my water, dry it a little bit, I can dab some of that just to create some of that effect. And then I'll show you. So you see my snowflakes, I like them, but I want them to kind of show up a little bit more. So here's what I'm going to do for that. So next I will take paper towel, just gonna to spray this with water, and I'm just gonna press it down over the stencil area, right? And I'm just gonna repeatedly, so it's just damp paper towel, pressed over that texture paste. So I didn't want to spray the background because I don't necessarily want to lift the color of my background. What I want to do is I want to lift the color of the paste. And you don't have to do it completely because you might be like, well, hello, Captain Obvious. Why didn't, if you wanted white snowflakes, why didn't you just put the paste on afterwards? Well, because I don't. Thank you. I don't want them totally white, but I want them to stand out. Look at that. So now we have all the beauty of that color. We still have the buildup of that mica stain around there. We can see that each snowflake has a little bit of that color variant from the background, but now they really stand out. Stunning, beautiful background. And you can see the beauty of the mica stain, but also the contrast by splattering on some oxide. Do you have to do that? No, you could do paint, you do whatever. You do whatever you want. I just like to share that you can really take products into whatever direction you want to take them as a maker. This could be something that you die cut. This, because I, I left myself a landing strip, I can go in and I can stamp, right? I can do a lot of different things to backgrounds, but I truly believe in compartmental creating, right? Don't sit there with the intent of always making something from start to finish. Now, if that's you and that's your thing, as I've said, you do you. If that's the only way that you can really process something, that's what you need to do. But for me, I find it very limiting because I'm always second guessing every step of like, oh, am I going to screw this up? Am I gonna... Because I have a, an, end, an end goal. But if you just sit there and you say, okay, I've got a bunch of stuff that I'm going to sit and just paste, right? Because this is messy. You're going to sit down with your paper and you're going to do all your stencils. You're going to do all your pasting. You're going to let these sit around to dry. You're going to clean your stencils. And then when you come back, you've got stuff to spray. And then you're just going to do all your spraying and then set those backgrounds aside. And then when you want to die cut, go through all of your stuff. I mean, I say it time and time again, but I think now more than ever, gosh, you guys, it's so important as makers that we don't, we don't give up in the season. This really is the time of year, as exciting as it is, right? As exciting as, you know, all these new products and it's Halloween, it's Christmas and we buy, 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 buy. And then all of a sudden you're too busy to use any of it. You're like, oh, I'll do it next year. Well, no. No, 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 do it now, do it this year, but just figure out a way to kind of make it happen. And this is what I was saying before. People ask, what do I do with my demo stuff? I use it, that's what I do. Um, these are the Distress uh, storage tins that you can use for crayons and glaze, but I use one. I have one for anything tag shaped, right? 
So sometimes I'm going to use a tag for what it is. Sometimes I might die cut it. There's all, I mean, you can see there's just different things, finished ideas, not finished ideas, but stuff certainly that I could cut or stamp on. If I'm making a card, I chop that off and now it's a background for a card. Those were Halloween. This was a cool thing that I wanted to, to play around with. I thought, what if I sprayed resist spray over the top, right? I'm a fan of resist spray. I'm gonna get into that in just a minute. I love resist spray because um, it's almost like a sprayable glossy accents, if you will, okay? You put it on. But what was cool about this is I thought, I wonder if the, if the resist spray is going to negate the, the mica. Not too much. I mean, I still see it. You can still see it build up, but definitely the shine is coming from the resist spray. So to resist or not to resist. But you can still see that the mica shows through. It's just way more uh, shimmery, shiny, because this has a layer of resist. And this is just sprayed on a very light coat, maybe two sprays, and you're done. But that was cool. But these are all just ideas that you can go in and, and work from. If you need a tag, well, you're good to go. If you need to cut stuff up, you're good to go. And same thing, I have another one just for backgrounds, because to me, that's different than a tag, right? So these are my these are the moon ones that I did last one. Those are some Halloween ones that I did. But see, all of these are now going to be great backgrounds to choose from. Like that was playing around with texture paste and embossing powder, right? That was grit paste. Look at that with the distress glaze. Metallics. Look at that. There's so many things that you guys can do if you just gave yourself permission to explore and not the frustration of, oh my gosh, I got to sit down and make from start to finish. Then you've got really these these tins of inspiration. And I have so many things. I have a trinkety bit tin, right? What do you do with all those trinkety bits? Those weird ideas, right? Like the frosted crystal that we did or that half done skull, that'll be something, right? Or any kind of dyes or paper dolls or right 3D things. It's all in here, right? Any of those elements in here, stamp things. Look at that. You, I mean, I could seriously go to card town here and leave leave my position as the mayor of tag town, go to card town and create a bunch of things. There's so many different things we can create. All right. How are we doing Mario? Doing all right? Yeah, Mario, Good. We're doing great. Okay. I'm going to go in and do one more background and then we're going to talk about the textures and the sparkle. Okay. This one, just because I want to show that if you wanted to create something that's kind of uh, woodsy and warm, this is a great, I love the stencil cause it's got all the pines and all of that stuff. That's just what I'm going to do. I will take a little bit of, well, let's start with some braid burlap. So I'm just going to spray a little bit of water. I don't want this to be, be too much, but let's do a little frayed burlap. You can see that one's definitely more on the splattery side. I'm going to take some tree lot. I love this color. Well, I love all the colors of the mica stain. I'll be honest. As I mentioned, uh, just from go, I designed a palette. I designed a palette that I wanted and that I knew that I would use year round. It's completely true because I knew this would only be seasonal. What wasn't something that we wanted to do a line extension. I think there's fun that it's seasonal, but I like the, the options of having all these different colors that I want to work with. You know, everything from holly branch to, to tree lot. I'm going to throw in just a little bit of frosted juniper. Do I wish that this, you know, was in five gallons? Sure. Cause I use it probably more than any color. It's just such a great, it just, changes everything, right? So look at this background, right? Tree lot, holly branch, frosted juniper, right? No bubbling cauldron in there. Could you? Sure. But you can see if you look at the this before I dry it, darkness, that's going to be your tree lot. This lime vibrant, that's your holly branch. And this really cool kind of uh, dark bluish, grayish, greenish magic. <laughs> that's it. That's, that's frosted juniper. Okay. Let's go ahead and dry this. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Really love the effects that sprays get. And you don't always have to spray everything, right? So I haven't, I only started with a mist of water in my background. So I haven't gone in and started spraying around. Um, let's see. Now I'm, now that I'm drying, I'll look at the chat for once. Um, question. Is there a storage tin for reinkers with the dropper top? Uh, coming, Joyce, hopefully 2022, we've actually been developing uh, the final tin to actually store a couple of things. The final tin, I don't mind leaking this information. Um, the final tin will actually uh, be able to store your paint dabbers, flip top paints, or distress reinkers with the dropper top. It's actually kind of this uh, conversion type of tin, if you will, because 
they're very similar in size, but we needed to do some modifications. So it has taken longer than the other tins, but it's looking good for uh, 2022. So that, that will happen. All right, so here's our background. Look at that. Woo, beautiful, beautiful. Now I wanna go in and just add the drips because that's what I wanna do, right? Dab some of it off. Just kind of see what you get. Sometimes I dry and dab. Sometimes I just dab. You never know. You kind of just do what, what's in there. There we go. So far, so good. Perfect. Then we can go in and do uh, all of those, those things that I talked about wanting to do before. We could start with a paintbrush and go in a specific area. Or if an area is by itself enough, like these pine cones, right? Just going to go in, spray with some water and just lift that color a little bit, just so I can add some color later. Even on some of the greens, I'm just gonna go in and just dab a little bit. And then I'm gonna go back in for the berries, just focus water, because see the berries I can actually just, with the brush, just drip water right in the center of those, and it just sits on there. And that will hopefully help me uh, lift the color much faster. You just got to find a clean spot. Dismount, 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 dismount. Look, so far so good. Look at those. Whoop, whoop. Okay. All right. Then we know what's next. See, once you have the idea, you do and repeat. Which, which so good. Did you use on that? Oh boy, it's that one over here. It's that one. Yes. See, I'm, I'm really glad because I'm not one to kind of stop and do stuff. I like everything and that's an old stencil, right? What's the number? It's pretty low. Yeah. Uh, THS029. There you go. See, 029. We're, we're in the, gosh, we're well into the hundreds. We're into the 150s now. So that's an old stencil, right? They're still available, but that's the, that's a thing to remember. And that's who I am, right? I know some people are like, why are you using, you know, older stuff? Why don't you use the new, new? Because we have it. Use what you have. All right, here we go. This time I'm just using Distress Ink. Uh, could you use an oxide? Sure. Should I? Maybe. But I'm just going to go for it. I'm okay with this. All right. Same thing. I'm sliding this forward because I want those bristles to be uh, compact if I can. Just to add that little subtlety of color. Right. But you could go in really with a brush and you could paint these. I mean, there's so many ways that you can highlight. You don't have to use uh, this brush. I mean, I'm just using it because I like the look of this. I always like when stuff has a little bit more of a feathery look, but that's me. Right? That's exactly what I, what I want to do. Okay, what do I have over here? Let's take a little walnut stain. I probably would want something a little bit on the warmer side, but I'm going to go for this. You know. Maybe you'd want to use brush corduroy, or you might want to use a, a little bit of um, vintage photo. You know what I'm going to try? Because I can. Because I'm not afraid to try something. Here we go. Let's try this. Let's take a little crooked broomstick. All right. I'm going to have to shake this up real quick because it's been sitting upright. All right. There we go. I got to get that mixing ball. If you don't hear that mixing ball move, it's there. There you go. There we are. You need that to move. Some people just shake it and they're like, oh, I must not have got one. Now <laughs> that has happened. Uh, I actually had a sprayer that had five. So that was a bonus one, the heavy bottle. Okay, so I'm going to take some of this and I'm just going to spray that right on the mat. Same brush. And now I'm just going to pick some of that up. See, look, it's going to be kind of hopefully... Hopefully it's not going to be too juicy. That's all I'm worried about. So I don't want to, you know, I just want to get some of that color on there. Oh yeah. Okay. I'm good with that. Cause this is going to give me, I think a little bit of a pearl, little pearl sheen on those pine cones, right? I'll just show you. Here's kind of what I'm applying. Can you guys see that on that? So I'm just, again, keeping those bristles really compact. And now I am stippling, kind of like old school stencil, because I think what this will do is it's going to provide uh, that really cool kind of mica luster uh, right over those pine cones. Let's dry that for a second. Okay. And I want to add some ink. So do I want to put this into my ink pad? No, not until I clean it. 
but I don't want to clean it right now because I'm in full creative mode. So that's the benefit of having a work surface, right? Smush some of that ink pad. It's no different than, you know, going onto your ink pad. Now you've just smushed it. And that's just going to allow me to kind of build up a little bit of that intensity around the pine cone, right? It's also just going to give me uh, the opportunity just to, just to blend. So now, I, could I use the dome foam like I did before? Yes, you have so many options, so many options, but I love that I can just slide this back. And now I've got, see how wispy this is? I like a wispy blending brush. I like something, see how those just really fan out? Because that's just gonna give me a much softer, kind of brown look to my background. And then again, I'm gonna go one more time with the, the splatter because I do like having that splatter. If I want them more outlined, I'm gonna do a quick little dry. And then I'll lift these off. So they're just more dramatic that way. See, if you heat first, you just get a little bit more drama on the splatters. But there you go. Look at that wintry tag. Beautiful, beautiful greens. Now, that's just not dry. That's where a little water splatter is. I don't wanna lift that because if I do, that means that holly will turn completely white. But beautiful. And you know, I'm going to still, Mario, I, I need help. No, I need to just stop. See, look at him. He's like, what do you need? What I need is someone to say, step away uh, from the not, inks. Not, okay. Happened. Because I really want to just add some of this, uh, this brown, that crooked broomstick. I want to just add that to the back. Can you do me a favor? Sure. In the top uh, left drawer of that wooden cabinet, a splatter brush, a distressed oh. splatter brush. This one, because I really want to make sure that I don't get too much brown because Crooked Broomstick is a brown, I just want to splatter it. So I'm going to take a, a splatter brush this time. So I'll still use what's here, right? So I'll just add a little bit more. There we go. Look at how beautiful that is, right? Just does the dance. And now I'll take a splatter brush. You get one? Oh yeah, there's several in there. You can bring me the drawer if you want. I'll grab it. You know, it's, it's going to be in the top. I don't know if my mic is fine. I know what, okay. one, what one looks like, so there you go. Okay, gonna just mix this up. So I'm taking a splatter brush because that's gonna give me uh, the ability to really swipe this up, get some of that crooked broomstick, see how it's really, it sits on there. And now I'm just gonna pull this back towards me, kind of off camera, you'll see. And then I'm just gonna let that go and splatter this onto the background, okay? There we go. Nice. All right. I want more. I really want some big, yeah, I want some big splotches. So now I'm just going to like sweep that. And now my splatters are just going to be a little bit more intense. You'll see in a second what this is doing. Okay. So the splatter brush, if you, if you work in the center and you kind of, I just tell people like, you know, strum it like a harp, you know, maybe, maybe you play the harp. But this way, I'm just splattering it. Okay, now I'm going to dry it. You'll see. Cool, cool effect. And you can even see it all over the paper towel as well. But the splatter brush, and you'll see why, it just gave me a little bit more control. You see? Look at that. You see those little splatters right there that are kind of this goldeny color? Ah, what I like. There we go. Focus on that. There we are. That is Crooked Broomstick from Halloween. See all that? So what I like about this is if I just use the regular mica sprays, those are the ones in the distress line, they don't have any colorant, that wouldn't be as, as vivid or visual on this background. But see that crooked broomstick? It just has that wonderful tarnished look for splatter. What a beautiful tag, huh? So three completely different wintry backgrounds, right? Snowy, festive, and definitely more woodlands. Again, perfect to cut up and kind of do whatever you want. That's the beauty of having uh, these Christmas ones. I love the, the Christmas set. So I'm just going to move this out of the way. This is just going to clean off with water. My brush, I'm also going to rinse this, right? Just take a baby wipe. So I'll just do that off camera when I'm done. Let me move this out of the way for right now. Let me clean this and let's get into some of the textures and talk about that. Let's see how you guys are doing. Thanks for the kind comments, guys. I'm, I'm trying to just give you inspiration. I know it's certainly been... Uh, several weeks of just new product, new product, and as exciting as it is to have new product, what makes it more exciting for me is that you guys know how to use it. 
and what to do with it if you get it. There's, it's just the, I mean, I always say to Mario, it's the curse of the maker. We want it. We want everything. We want all the shiny toys. But then you just forget everything that you have in the toy box. You, you forget about your ink pads and you forget about your resist sprays and your stains and your splatter brushes and all that because you're just in a, a whole nother, whole nother place creatively. And I just, I don't think that we should ever get there that we forget everything. It's okay to move on to what you like, but all right. So next let's talk specifically about textures and what we can do. And I'll talk about these two. Okay, so these are the Christmas ones. Again, Icicle and Snowfall. Now, when you work with these, I prefer a palette knife. I'll say it again and again. I prefer a palette knife. Can you use a brush? Yes, I prefer a palette knife. So can I take this and spread it on with my finger? Yes, I prefer a palette knife. And the reason is the palette knife is going to give you more control over both the texture and the crackle because it's not going to leave brush strokes if you used a paintbrush, and it's also not going to flatten it with your finger, like on grit paste, a palette knife is going to allow much, much more control. So here's what we can do. For the grit, if you wanna put it on the edge of something, and I'll just take a piece of cardstock just to show you uh, how it can be applied. So first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna take, now these palette knives, you use whatever you want. Use, use you, but these are the ones I'm always using, right? Um, there's nothing fancy about it. Uh, they don't have my name on it or anything, but they are part of the distress line. They are my favorite palette knives because they are flexible, but rigid, right? So I have control, but I also have the ability to have a little bit of flex in here. So this is going to be the grit snowfall. So what you can do is you can spread this on first, right? With a palette knife. And then you can go in and move it around. Now, if you really want to create something subtle, can you use your finger? Yes, but I'll just show you that when you use your finger, you want to spread it out, right? Because maybe you want to just get a little bit of that moved. Okay, see how I can spread that out a little bit thinner? But then I still like to go with my palette knife and just ensure that I have peaks in there, right? So I'm just like touching and lifting because those peaks, that's going to dry like that. It's going to dry trans, translucent, right? not transparent, translucent. So it's going to be somewhat see-through, but see, I just have more texture. So if you ever want to smooth it out, you can go in with your finger. Don't say, Oh, Tim said, don't use your finger. You can, but see how like that's flat right now, right there. And then just watch just if I take a palette knife and just touch it, just little touches, you just start getting the peaks and you can appreciate that grit paste uh, a little bit more when it dries, you'll just get a better texture. So that's a, a cool way that we can add gritty snow. Now, can you do this through a stencil? Absolutely. You can, you can apply this however you want to apply it with that palette knife, however you see fit. The important thing though, to remember is that you want it to dry. You don't want to heat dry this ever. Uh, grit paste should not be heated. It actually smells really horrible uh, when you do and it will melt. So we're just going to let that dry and do its thing. Okay. This you can always put that back into the jar. There's a lot in there. I normally will take my medium from the sides and kind of do a little swirl in the center, right? That just gets most of the medium off of the edge and then it keeps it fresher. You can do uh, these little jars, they, you use them up pretty quick. So, but you can, you can put press and seal over the top. Okay. So really that's the thing about grit paste. Very simple, apply a little bit, tap it with a palette knife, let it do its thing, let it dry. Okay. The next one, it comes to the icicle crackle. Let's take this off. What do I want to put this on? Do I could put it over an inky background, but I don't think I want to. I think I'm just going to show you cardstock for now. It's not going to crack on camera. It takes a, a while to crackle, but I'll just show you like what I mean by thick and thin. So now I'm going to go to a, a wider palette knife because I want to be able to spread it around. So this one is great for small areas, edges, stencil designs. I use this guy for backgrounds, whether it's gesso or in this case, crackle, I'm going to use the, the large guy. I'm also going to work on the craft mat part because this stuff is going to wipe off with ease. I'm going to pick this up. Oh, there's that pearl. Woo. Again, you don't have to stir. You don't have to do anything. And we're just going to spread this on. Now you can see the texture of this, right? So it is still a paste. It's not a paste like we're kind of used to with a, a much thicker, but it's got a very thick viscosity that will hold its form. So those ripples right there, they're going to stay like that. So it is important that if you want to move this out, that you move it, right? You can still spread this in different directions. Now let's just talk about thickness. Okay. 
So if I pick up a little bit more and I'll go in this area and I'm just using, it's hard to kind of demo this because it's easier to demo on a flat surface, but I'm just taking the edge of the palette knife and I'm skimming it across the surface, right? I'm not holding it this way and scraping it, right? Because that's going to take off all your medium. You see that? So it's almost like just, just letting this glide, but you need a little bit of an angle because if you have it totally flat, see how it's just going to push off your medium? That's not going to work either. So you'll get the hang of it. So if you just have like a, a slight angle, I've got my finger in that little divot right there. And you just kind of skim, just think of like skipping a rock over a, over a, a pond, right? Just move that around different directions. See all those cool textures and ripples. You're going to get that when it dries. The thicker areas are going to have bigger cracks. The thin areas are going to have much finer cracks. This is what I would consider, believe it or not, a thin layer. This is still considered a thin layer, in my opinion, as far as what you would achieve. This stuff right here, there, it's almost where it's already dry, non-existent. This won't crack at all, okay? Which is okay, right? You can spread that out, but it needs to look wet when you're done so you know you have enough medium to crack, okay? So let's say we want to get, we want to get our crack on and we want some really big cracks. This is where we're putting it on as if you would uh, icing. Again, I would do this all on a, a flat surface. But think of like icing a cupcake or, or putting butter on toast if you like it or peanut butter, right? We're still using the palette knife in that way of moving it around in different directions. You can see because I want the crackle to go in different directions, but it's definitely thick. You can just see on the edges that we have that raised edge versus here where it's, it fades out. Can you guys see that? So here you can see the ripples where it's thicker, but here the whole thing is pretty much thick. That whole kind of thick glassy surface that's going to provide bigger cracks when it dries. That's it. That's, that's kind of the difference, right? Between thick and thin when you're applying this and you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. Can you recrack your crack? No, you, you could put stuff over the top of it, but it's not going to make that look better. Uh, my advice is you just put it on and, and work with it. The thing to remember also about this particular type of crackle, it is designed to crack like ice not like weathered wood. It's not designed to give you uh, an all over really fine uh, weathered wood crackle. I wanted something different. We have that. If you want really fine crackle, you would use Distress Rock Candy uh, crackle paint, right? We have, it comes in a, a pretty big tub and you paint that on and you get all these little fine uh, crackly bits. But this one, we wanted uh, that icicle effect. You can kind of see the pearl in there, but really when it dries is when you see the, the shimmer. It's very subtle because you can't add too much pearl, otherwise it would no longer be translucent, right? It would be opaque. So how do we use this, okay? Can you put too much crackle on? You can, you could always put too much. Obviously, if you pick it up to where it's just oozing off like a monster uh, off of your paper, I would call that too much. If you're done with it and it's still moving on your paper and you're not doing it, that's too much, right? So you can skim some of that off and put it back in the jar. Yeah, you can always add too much. So just, you'll get the hang of it. My advice, start with a swatch. Don't start on your make. Get a piece of paper and go, okay, I'm gonna get the feel of it. Okay, and I'm gonna write down this was thin. Okay, this was thick and let it dry and crack and go, okay, now I get it. And if it didn't crack enough, you're like, okay, that wasn't enough. Always start on a swatch. Just, you, Everyone has to learn. That'd be like just, you know, just jumping on a bike and sitting back, you know, as a five-year-old and be like, watch me, it's not happening. Okay, these are just gonna do their thing. They're gonna dry, but I'm gonna get them out of my way because I will be the one that sticks my hand in them. But I wanted to talk about how do you use that? Where do you put that into play? Well, I already mentioned that you can do that on a background, right? You can do that over an inky background. That's a beautiful uh, icy look. In fact, I think this one, I do wanna add some crayon in some areas just so you can kind of see it a little bit more just going to scribble let's scribble some of this on just quickly move that with my finger you can see the crackle on here so so nice let's move this on look at that oh gosh see it just gives it so much depth oh my word yum okay so we've got our background but how else could we use it well one thing that i i think is a, a great thing to do for christmas and it's important to know now because Halloween just came out and Halloween will be shipping later this month from Ideology. But this is one of the SKUs, right? They're called baseboard window frames. And it was a whole assortment of die cut window frames. If you haven't seen it, uh, you can go watch the video and see the all the cool makes for Halloween. But this is great for Christmas. These are actually great uh, year round, but also for Christmas. So you might want to consider that. So let's just say we have 
a beautiful window frame, right? Christmas, love this window frame. I went in and took a transparency. You can use any kind of transparency you want. I like to work with shrink plastic a lot because shrink plastic is a very rigid transparency, but you can use any kind of transparency. This one is just the crackle. Now, in order to get this to adhere to plastic, I put a thin layer, and I left some exposed right there, a thin layer of Distress Collage Medium in matte. Because remember, this needs to have tooth. So this is put on very, very thin. You just use a brush, put it on as thin as possible, and it's going to make your plastic look matte. Do you see right there where my finger is, where it's, it's kind of matte finish? That, as soon as it dries, which should only take literally seconds. If it's taking more than seconds to dry, you have too much collage medium. You should be brushing it on to where it's pretty much drying on contact, right? Once that dries, then you're going to go in with your palette knife. You're going to add your crackle and you're just going to let it do its thing. So you see what I mean? This was crackled over the whole entire thing. You can see my dismount right there, <laughs> right? Because the, I told you the, the thick texture holds it. But I love that because it just crackled like ice. And the beauty of this, of course, is now if I put it in a window frame, well, I've got a wonderful wintry window. There, there could be a tree behind it. This even kind of looks like spider webs for for Halloween, which is kind of cool. But I love the fact that you can now create a wintry window by just taking a transparency, acetate, shrink plastic, a little bit, and you can see the pearls. See that little bit of pearl sheen in there? Beautiful. But it's sticking to that because there is that layer of collage medium. That's gonna give it some tooth, right? I love it. And that's a, a beautiful thing for a make or even a card just to give it that wonderful wintry effect. And over, really, over any kind of background, it's still gonna be, you're gonna see that because of that icicle, kind of icy crackle. Beautiful, right? You can see that that pearl really, really builds up right there on the transparency. I like that a lot. Okay? Yeah, of course, light it up. Yeah, that's right. Light it up with tiny lights, Julie. You got it. All right, so this was crackle. But here's the other one, and this is my favorite. If you've ever seen a demo, I mean, I talk about this stencil like, and this was the stencil way back when, when I sent it to Mr. Stampers Anonymous. He's like, what is this? I'm like, what this is, this is magic. This will be the magic stencil that everyone will want. So look at this. You see, look at this beautiful ice. It literally looks like snow flurries, does it not? Like snow that's on your windshield, the little ice that, that sticks up. It's very crunchy, okay? This is the grit paste in snowfall and when it dries you can see that it is translucent so it's not white you can see through it but where it's built up it looks a little bit less translucent you can see right through it just like water it's so cool it's textured this is also on a transparency untreated you do not have to apply this to a treated surface grit paste sticks to everything okay so it does not need to have collage medium the crackle is the one that needed collage medium. So if you're taking notes, write that one down. It's important because if you put collage medium over this, it's no longer going to be translucent, right? It's going to look very opaque. Here you can see that the crackle took care of that opacity, right? Wherever it was opaque, you can see where the crackle is. It became translucent again. So this, this cool icy layer, take a look at this snow flurry in the window. Oh my gosh, right? So how is this done? Well, I mentioned it's a stencil. Because if you try to do this with the end of a brush or your finger, it's not going to look like this. It's going to look like a blizzard outside. This, we wanted to have that wonderful icy snowfall. My stencil of choice, look at the number of this one, 21, way long ago. This one, it's like this speckly, splattery stencil. I've used it for so many things. I've used it for inks and all of that, but you can see the residual paste that sits on here because I've used this for so many years. Um, it's my go-to. It is my go-to stencil because I have the ability to put a textured medium through a stencil and create this splattery look. That's what it is. And so this gives me a very cool, authentic, snowy background. I use it on cards. I use it on all sorts of things. So this is that very cool grip paste snowfall through stencil number 21. This is the speckle. This is it. A lot of grief. Yeah. Because he's like, what is this? I'm like, it's a cool pattern. Yeah, but who's going to use this? I'm like, anyone that likes cool patterns, really? Because, I mean, how do you how do you replicate that? And yes, there's a hidden Mickey. You're welcome. But yes, it's there. Um, 
I just love this. I love this for many, many reasons. It's just a very cool stencil. Um, I will say that I've, I've gone through a few of these, you know, through the years because I use it for like, sometimes if you don't clean it out right away, you'll start filling in these little guys out here. And when that happens, you can either soak it in warm water or just, yeah, get a new one. But just wanted to share with you. So if you have some of these or you're getting some for Halloween, you may want to pack for Christmas because I think it just provides a great wintry look, whether you want it to be uh, icy, right? Jack Frost out there or whether you want to have a beautiful uh, snowfall. And I, again, there's nothing better than this icy look of this grit paste because it really does look and feel like ice. No collage medium, collage medium. Okay, excellent. All right, next one, we're just going to wrap it up just by talking about glitter because I save glitter to the end because as I mentioned, it's not really my, uh, my indoor activity. I like glitter, but I will use glitter outside when I use glitter, okay? A couple of ways that we can apply glitter. You can use glossy accents if you want. Um, you can use resist spray if you want. There's anything that's going to stay sticky, you can use glitter, right? You, some people use school glue, tape runners. There's a, a million things. So I can't really say, here's what you need to use for this. Sometimes I will use glossy accents if I want to put it on the edge of things. Uh, sometimes I will use... Uh, resist spray if I wanted to just kind of have a pattern of stuff and that's the one I'm going to share with you is just show you resist spray because maybe you want to just do a little bit of sparkle uh, over a background so let's I'm just going to take some craft paper just to show you so we can get the effect of the glitter but really this could be over any kind of substrate you want it to be okay but I want you to be able to see it now there's several ways that we can use this glitter you could dump it straight out of the jar okay by dumping it straight out of the jar, right? We dump it, we, we pour it back in, that's all good. Or we can use a, a glitter duster. And so I'm gonna talk about those. These are from Stampers Anonymous. Um, I have many glitter dusters. I have glitter dusters for all different glitters that I have. So this is clear rock candy glitter. Uh, this is part of the distress line. This is where my Halloween glitter ended up going. So I put that wonderful new black distress Halloween glitter in my glitter duster. And then I already put in uh, tinsel in here. Okay, but you could put tinsel garland. You could have another one. You could really have as many as you want. The benefit of a glitter duster is it just allows me to kind of dust or cascade glitter on something versus pouring it on. And I'll show you what I mean. So let's just take this. We'll take a piece of paper. Now, mind you, this could be anything. Okay. Um, oh, Vicky says she likes to mix it with glossy accents. That's a great idea. Take glossy accents, mix it down and create a paste. Yeah, I mean, you could probably even mix some with a little with a little crackle too. That could be cool. So there's so many different ways from an adhesive aspect. So my resist spray, I just want to make sure it's working. It's ready to go. All right. So this one's going to go on a little bit more splattery. So here's what I'm going to do. To get that glitter duster to work, you're just going to click this out. Okay, it's a little clicking mechanism. You're going to point it. And then this just, you'll see, it just dusts the glitter on there. So I'm going to spray this on just to kind of create a little splatter pattern, right? You guys see that? There you go. And then I'll just take the glitter duster and I'm just gonna start dusting this on. And you can see it coming right out. It just, it puffs the glitter. Then we can take this, do the little dance underneath. Look at that. Little bit of glitter. Now you're like, okay, well, why did you dust it? Why wouldn't you just pour it on there? Okay, well, let's, there's still some resist here. Let's show when you pour it on there. Okay, we'll take a little tinsel. Okay, well, besides it, you have a ton, which is okay. See the difference? See how that's raised? Like it's a raised chunk of glitter. And maybe that's what you're going for. Maybe, really, maybe that's your jam. You want, you want that, that chunky glitter. But by dusting it on, we're getting it just to hit a few little tiny areas. So it just, to me, it has a different, more of a twinkle effect than this. This is definitely more nuggety because it wraps it. You, again, do you. But sometimes you just want a dusting of glitter over something that you want to, to put over the top. This, I'll just take my paper. Oh boy. It's very strange to do this inside, honestly, guys. But I'll pour this back in. Okay. And this is just parchment paper, uh, baking paper. You can use whatever, but I like, you could use regular copy paper if you want to. Okay. So some other things that we can 
we can utilize with that. There's many things, right? Resist spray, if we wanted something that was a little bit thicker, let's see what we got in here. Let's see what we have. I'm gonna look in my little bin of, my bin of wonder. Gosh, I don't know what I have in here, Mario. Um, what do I, huh? I was just thinking to myself, but I'll say it out loud because I almost said it and then I stopped. I was like, what do I want to destroy with glitter? I'll destroy this. This is just a die cut piece, 3D, but we'll add, we'll add some glitter to it. And I say destroy, meaning uh, usually I like a much subtle effect, but sometimes you just, you want to get your bling on. That's fine. So I'm going to go back in with a resist spray. Now I'm just going to really spray this. Give it nice saturation of that. And then we can go in and we're just going to dust this. Okay. Now again, I'm dusting this because I'm still gonna leave some of that metallic showing through. Click that closed, pick this up, get it right out of there. Okay. And now I will set this here, I'm gonna dry this. Resist spray will also air dry. You see how it kind of goes on purpley? That's so you know you have resist spray. But yeah, we can just go in and dry this. You don't have to dry this. You can let this air dry. This is not embossing powder, but just for the sake of the demo so you can see it, I want to dry it just so you see the idea of if you really want to do stuff for the holidays and get stuff blingy, you can take resist spray, put it over something metallic, then do a little dusting of glitter. Okay. Let me just make sure we don't have any excess on to show you, right? So the glitter is on there. It's not coming off, but this is what you end up with, right? So you have a gilded, sparkly, glittery frame, right? And the glitter is, it's, it's in there, it's embedded. That's the thing about resist spray because it's a liquid, that glitter gets in there and it gets coated inside and out, but beautiful. There we go, you can see there, there. Now the light's catching it magically. Like it's much more, much more beautiful. So what's nice about this again, I don't know if you can still see in there. You can see the distressed crayon that was under there. You can see some of that metallic because this is just craft stock. This is just ideology craft stock. But adding a little bit of that new vintage glitter just gives it a nice subtle effect by adding the spray and adding the, the duster that doesn't completely cover your surface in glitter if that's what you wanted to use. Same thing like really for Halloween. I mean, this black glitter is just, it's so good. I'll just put some there just in my hand. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Glitter dusters for the win. I like them a lot. Okay. So there we have it. We've talked glitter. I'm dumping this out of the, out of this flat box. We've talked glitter. We've talked texture. We've talked ink. We've talked a lot. And I say we, but it's really me, myself, and I that has done the talking. Am I right, Mario? What's that? Yeah, I, I am the talker. Oh, one other thing. I see it off on the side that I I wanted to talk about one other thing to remember uh, people have have asked about stamping over the the mic stands now if you have them and you've used them then you certainly know about them you know that you can work with honestly whatever different let me take this out whatever different art surfaces that you want but if you are going to stamp on a background that you've done in mic stain my advice is stamp with something that's going to be permanent so i like to work with uh, Distress Archival, it's oil-based, so it's going to sit on top of that mica stain, but you can also work with any other kind of, of oil-based or some type of permanent ink to go over the top. If you stamp with Distress or Oxide, you can, but it really kind of becomes compromised by that mica that's in the mica stain, so you want an ink that's going to sit on top. Listen, if you really want your image to pop, use embossing, black embossing powder, white embossing powder, anything like that. But yeah, there's a lot of cool Cool effects. I love, again, seeing all of these, just these products finally here. The fact that I, I can look and see the whole set, it's pretty amazing. Will mica stains work on bubbles or baubles? No, those require alcohol inks, right? Mica stains, water-based. They only work on things that are porous, right? Papers and wood, things like that. So let's put these in set order. There's set one. We've got peppermint stick, frosted juniper, tree lot. Set two, we have winterberry holly branch and snow flurries Oop, only one has the cap that means the only one i put put over the top of that but really i hope you guys are inspired by all of these these wonderful new products i a shout out to ranger for 
for having this. I think it's so, so cool to have all of these great uh, surfaces and textures in here from the grit to the crackle. And again, thin icicle, thick, crackety crack, that's the best. Uh, again, putting it on your substrate, having your, your sparkly, I'm keeping these in the bag as well because we need that. So the, the Christmas release, I think it's just gonna be a, a whole great introduction from from textures to sparkles to sprays. So that is the Christmas. But let's really wrap this up right and show you the full potential that if you have collected the Halloween and the Christmas sets of these products from the mica stain, well, we already know. It's just gonna be this. It's gonna be that beautiful, beautiful rainbow of colors. I think that there's nothing, to me, there's just, there's nothing better right? There's nothing better than having all of these colors for the entire year. You think about that, you think about, you know, Valentine's Day and, oh, I'm going to have now pinks and reds and I'll have some purples. And for springtime, I'm going to have the, the greens and yellows and orange. I can even throw in some pink for that too. And summertime, I'm going to have the beautiful blues, the browns. Look at that. What a very cool thing. I'll even put this in frame because I can. So yeah, pretty cool, right? 